You're watching NFL Daily. This show was first recorded over on Rumble. So if you want to give us a follow on Rumble, remember it's rumble.com slash NFL Daily. Or you can always hit that subscribe button on YouTube if you want to wait to see the show that gets put out a little bit later on. Either way, though, it's free content. Coming up here, what we're going to be talking about is trades. And every single time the NFL preseason happens, there's always overreactions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about seven NFL players that could be traded after the first week of the NFL preseason because sometimes coaches get eyes on certain guys and they're like, you know what, that's the player we're going to roll with. And then with a the new regime, sometimes you ship on some other dudes out. The first player I'm going to bring up here that could be a potential trade candidate is Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback Mason Rudolph, who honestly thought he played pretty well against the Seattle Seahawks. 9 of 15, 93 yards and a touchdown. The issue is this, Kenny Pickett also played well. Also, Mitch Trubisky did too. And when I look at the quarterbacks on this roster, there's been some split reports out there that Rudolph could potentially be the number one guy. To me, though, he's the third best quarterback on the roster. You drafted Kenny Pickett number 20 overall. You signed Mitch Trubisky in the offseason. Why? Not because you're confident in Mason Rudolph. Because you valued that those players were better than the players you already had on your roster. So if right now you can move on from Rudolph, get a fifth round pick for him, I think that you would have to consider that if you're Pittsburgh. If the Steelers do pull off a trade like that, if any of the players that I mentioned on today's show get traded away, we're going to make a video about it. So subscribe to Chat Sports for the best NFL news coverage. I promise you, we're going to keep you guys up to date. Let's go to the next player here on our list, and it's Alex Leatherwood, offensive tackle for the Raiders. Leatherwood didn't play a single snap in the first half up against the Vikings. And what Las Vegas went with is Thayer Munford. There were reports that Munford, who was drafted in the seventh round out of Ohio State, could actually start to get starting reps at right tackle. Considering the fact that the new regime and Josh McDaniels, Dave Ziegler drafted Munford and they didn't draft Leatherwood, it is raising some concern for some people out there. McDaniels did say that he just wanted to see Munford work in with the starting unit. But you know what, though? I feel like if you knew what the starting unit was, then Leatherwood wouldn't be playing in the third quarter. Now, as it stands right now, I do still think that he is the favorite to start at right tackle. But there have been some legitimate rumors out there that the Raiders could potentially add another offensive tackle to play on the right side because they're not exactly thrilled about what they've seen so far. Leatherwood, though, is a player to at least keep in mind in terms of being on the trade block. Let's go to New York. We're going to talk about wide receiver Kenny Galladay. And to me, this just seems like a situation where Galladay doesn't look like he wants to be a giant. Like, his effort yesterday, I don't know if you saw the deep pass back of the end zone, I think if he dives for that football, he catches it, and it's a touchdown. He was targeted three times, had one catch for six yards. The Giants paid this man a lot of money to be that number one. He didn't have a touchdown last season. He was targeted 76 times, 521 yards. He's had injuries throughout his entire career, but why am I going to keep an injury-plagued receiver that's kind of acting, in my opinion, right now like a little bit of a diva who looks upset that he doesn't want to be out there? So for me, if I'm a team and if I'm the Giants and I can get at least a draft pick for him, I get you want to try to build around Daniel Jones. But if you're going to get the effort that he showed in the NFL preseason game, he shouldn't even be out there on the field as far as I'm concerned. If you guys like free and uncensored content, seriously, give us a follow on Rumble right now. This video was released on Rumble before it was put out on YouTube. Keep that in mind. So if you like to stay in the know, Give us a follow on Rumble right now. Let's go to the next player here that could be an NFL trade candidate. And this guy has been featured in almost every trade video we do. Why? Because he wants out of San Francisco. San Francisco has moved on from him. And if I'm Jimmy Garoppolo, I just saw Trey Lance not only play well against Green Bay, but he looked really good against the Packers, which maybe for Kyle Shanahan, maybe for John Lynch, you're like, you know what? We're going to be okay. Trey... Played really, really well. He was 4 or 5, 92 yards and a touchdown. So even though we want more from Jimmy, I'd rather get something for Garoppolo than just releasing him after August 30th, and then you don't get anything. Because for anybody out there who doesn't think that you can get something for Garoppolo, I think you're crazy. Yeah, he's not a spectacular quarterback. He's a game manager, but you know what? He wins. And I always find it laughable 
that sometimes people are like, oh, they judge some quarterbacks based on wins, and then they don't judge other quarterbacks based on wins. Garoppolo, to me, isn't a top 20 quarterback in terms of talent, but I do think he's a good leader. He's shown that he can come up clutch in the playoffs. So if you're a team out there that's not 100% sold on your quarterback situation, I think you'd be dumb to not pick up the phone and at least see what the 49ers are looking for right now. Now, he is on the 49ers. It sounds like he's not going to be on the team after August 30th. But the question is, what team does he play for? Because the team that I think makes the most sense is the team that's in their division, the Seattle Seahawks. I don't see a deal like that going down. What happens if he backs up Tom Brady again in Tampa Bay? I mean, I've seen some people say, as bad as Nick Mullins or Jared Stidham be, should the Raiders go out and get Jimmy Garoppolo? If he's released, I mean, if I'm McDaniels, I think you at least pick up the phone and say, hey, Garoppolo, you want to come to Las Vegas? You want to be a backup to Derek Carr? All of those are possibilities. But I want to know, where will Jimmy G play in 2022? Next player coming up here on my NFL trade candidate is going to be Tyler Johnson. And sometimes players can get extra trade value if they play well. Thought he looked pretty damn good against the Miami Dolphins. Six catches, 73 yards in that preseason week one game. The issue for Johnson is he's going to be buried on that depth chart. You got Julio Jones, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. I'm sorry, Tyler Johnson, if those three players are healthy, you're not going to get a lot of playing time. So if I was Tampa Bay, I would try to show him off a little bit because I actually think he can be a halfway decent wide receiver three. So for a team like Chicago that's got just tons of injuries right now at the wide receiver position, make a move for Tyler Johnson. Six foot one, 206 pound receiver, fifth round pick, I believe, out of Minnesota. He had 36 catches, 360 yards last season. You can get some talent here, especially if you can get a six round pick for a player who's probably not going to get on the field that much. I think you should try to do it. Let's go to the next player here on my list for trade candidates after preseason week one. It's Raiders running back Kenyon Drake. And when you look at the Raiders depth chart as it stands right now, he's actually listed as the RB4 behind Zamir White, behind Brandon Bolden, behind Josh Jacobs. Also, though, the Raiders restructured his contract this offseason, so it doesn't really make sense to cut him because the Raiders eat $8 million. But if you trade him, you only eat 1.1, you save 2.75. Sure, you're going to have to eat some money in 2023, but this Raiders staff is worried about him right now. Also, there were reports before that preseason game that Amir Abdullah could potentially play a James White role. You know who are the only running backs that didn't play in the preseason game? Josh Jacobs, Brandon Bolden, and Amir Abdullah. Could that potentially mean bad news for Kenyon Drake? I mean, I think we should at least talk about it because when you look at his contract restructure, it's a lot easier to move on from Drake in a trade than it is to cut him, which makes him a trade candidate in my book. Now, there's a lot of Raider fans out there, and I appreciate everyone that's already joined our awesome Raiders community over on Locals. If you haven't yet, scan that QR code. Join us, RaidersReport.Locals.com. If you want to know which Raiders player I believe is on the trade block, this is video for exclusive watchers only. I put out two exclusive videos every single week. I also go live at least once a week. So if you just want extra Raiders content, you can listen to like a podcast. Hit me up over on Locals, RaidersPort.Locals.com. Let's go with the last player here for my trade candidates video. I'm going to go with Noah Igbenogany, cornerback for the Miami Dolphins. First round pick in 2020. And since the day he's been drafted out of Auburn, he has been hashtag terrible. I mean, it's just, it's been bad. And sometimes, if I'm a player, especially a young guy, sometimes you just need a change of scenery. Maybe that's what Noah needs. You got a brand new coaching staff that they just want to probably get something for him. Yeah, you lost Trill Williams for the season, which some people are like, ooh, maybe this opens up the door for Igbenogany. The issue is they just went out and they signed Mackenzie Alexander who is probably going to take that spot from Noah. So you're like, all right, we had a first-round pick in 2020. If he's a roster bubble candidate and he might not even make the team, why would you not try to make the deal for him, right? I mean, the Seattle Seahawks, they were just about to release, and I can't think of his name right now, and then they traded him for J.J. Ortega-Whiteside. So Amadi, that's who it is, Amadi. Sometimes that's what NFL teams do. They're like, all right, let's try to release this guy, and then you end up trading him away. That could be a situation here for the Miami Dolphins. So those were seven players that I think could potentially get dealt after the first week of the preseason. If you like this video, you might see it again on a later show on Chat Sports. But before I go, 
Name another player that could be traded. 